Hey guys, what's up? My name is Peter and welcome to this long overdue new video for Handy Tools. So let's get started. Once you downloaded the package from the asset store, you can find it under tools, handy tools. And then we have a window and a shortcut menu. These shortcuts can be edited through script and all information is in the documentation uh, with a few links to the Unity code site where you can see which uh, shortcuts you can use. Let's open up the handy tools window and I'd like to dock it next to the inspector and put the hierarchy in the middle uh, simply because of the relation between handy tools and the hierarchy and the inspector. So the first thing we are going to demonstrate is these first few items. They are quite easy but for the sake of this tutorial I thought to cover them anyhow. So first off we have the parent setting and as you will notice you don't need to click this little icon here you simply can click on the name which is convenient I guess. So we can choose a parent name and create it so over here we have a simple new uh, holder. This is currently at 0,0. zero. And as you can see, the box is somewhere around uh, 27. We could use reset here, but we also can do reset position. Now, if we edit this, and let's say our cube is in a very large world of 100. So right here. So every time you would create a new game object, it would set itself at zero. So if we set the position reset to roughly where we are and we keep it this, this way, we can quickly create new, new objects and put them directly uh, where we want to. Now let's say we are working over here. We create a new cube. It will still apply, but if we choose to reset the position, as you can see, we're nicely sitting in this 100 area. And as you can see, demo layer. And it applies to all children. So next up we have the rigid body tools and the smart rigid body. If you uncheck this you can choose which uh, type of rigid body you want to use. So if it recognizes a mesh renderer it will create a rigid body and similarly if we create a sprite, I'm not going to bother to put in a sprite but believe me, attach a 2D rigid body and as you can see, it creates a 2D rigid body. So we have the offset tools. We can choose to use negative values. So it will go in a opposite direction. And the same is true for all axes. And obviously you can choose to do it on all the axes at once. There's a convenient button here called reset position and remember this will apply to the edit reset settings so for example if I put this at 100 and I press reset position and obviously this will sit at the 100 uh, position here the offset divided by 2 is simply a nice way for having half measures, but since I placed this at 100, it will go back to uh, zero because we used zero here. So it's uh, it wasn't intended, but it showcases that it will actually use these values here. If I duplicate this again, 
and choose to offset divided by two and you can see it nicely sits halfway i added this in because for my own projects i often do stuff like this and i don't want to change these values 100 times uh, in one project so basically that's it one other thing these tools work with a multiple selection option so if we choose to offset on the x-axis as you can see it works with more than one game object selected and this is basically true for for all of these tools the rotation settings and let's make use of this little tool here we set all the positions to zero and let's spread them out a little bit obviously i could use the offset tools but you know well basically i'm showing this because it's not forcing you to use it it's just there if you would need it you you still can rotate and position stuff as you want of, uh, of course let's choose 33 and use a incremental rotation standard the rotation clockwise is checked on so this will rotate all the selected cubes at 30 degrees or 33 degrees rather i can reset the rotation and of course here as well if the reset rotation is 50 when you put in reset rotation then of course you know the drill by now so we have a random rotation which which is a random value between 0 and 33 and we can choose a snap random rotation and this is useful for let's say 45 degrees and this will snap the cubes to a angle of a random value that uh, corresponds with uh, 45 degrees so if i reset this again it's more obvious what it actually does so next up we have the scale tools so we have a normal scale and i have some previous recorded demo settings here but we can choose to scale the x-axis the y-axis and the z-axis which is <laughs> roughly the same but that's something like this and we can choose to randomize in a uniform way so a random value between 0.5 and 2 on the y-axis of 5 and the z-axis of 3 so scale all axes since it's uniform and then we get something like this this is really useful for for rocks or, or anything else in your scene and we can randomize the scale only on the axis that we want also pretty useful and obviously we can scale this on all axes again we can always reset this and we can flip the axis this won't be very visible since I don't have a texture but you know what it would do it simply inverts the uh, the scale next up we have a tiled layout so this only works with one game object so let's say i want five tiles on the x-axis five tiles on the y-axis so it will go up and two on the z-axis 
And let's say we have a gap of two. It will nicely construct a r little grit. So if we toggle this grit open, you will see it has created these levels. Of course, ground level is zero and the fifth item is actually the fourth. So we have a circle ellipse layout here. So let's say we want a ellipse of 20 items in a radius of 50, which is pre pretty large. Uh, let's generate the circle. So it nicely places them in a circle. So the next thing we have is the ellipse and circle layout. So let's say we want a item count of 20 and a radius X of 50 and a radius Y of 20. Hide the center and use the current center, which means that it will be created at these values, but let's reset them. Or of course I could reset them over here. So let's generate the grid from the selected object. As you can see, it created a nice elliptical shape. So let's create uh, select this sphere and check circle. Let's do 30 and item count 10 maybe. And use a vertical orientation. So as you can see created this vertical uh, circular grid. Also the naming is correct versus what we did. So we made a circle the last time and it's an independent group so you can move this around and do the stuff that you want. So basically I think I covered all the tools instead of the snap settings and uh, let's simply drag out one of these spheres. One thing to note is that when you are using the offset and rotation and scale tools, if you enable the snap settings it uh, will apply. So it's uh, a good thing to know. So let's say I only want to snap on the x-axis in increments of 10. It's hard to see maybe, but it will nicely jump to the increments of 10. But it won't on the other axis. Obviously, if you like to snap them all, then you can do so. And again, reset the position. And I made a little button to delete it if you are tired of working <laughs> with Unity. Okay, that's it for this video and thank you for sticking around. Bye-bye.